everyone, this is Roar with another update. I finished my seventh round of chemotherapy about two weeks ago, and uh, so far, as expected, each of the side effects has continued to kind of be enhanced with each round of chemotherapy. As far as top to bottom, as far as my hair, it uh, continues to fall out throughout my body. On top of my head, I developed this kind of white peach fuzz on the top of my scalp recently. It's really kind of strange. I plan on shaving that off tonight and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't come back. My beard this past week, I grew, it was like a blonde peach fuzz as well, kind of like a teenage fuzz on my face, uh, very fine type hair, and I shaved that off. That was, that was weird. Um, my eyebrows are still coming out. I'm trying to hold on to the few that I have left. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can hold on to them. Definitely not growing any more eyebrows right now, but just try not to touch them <laughs> so they don't fall out there. I and mean, if they do, uh, it is what it is with regard to that. Most of the other hair in my body uh, has fallen out or continues to fall out uh, as, as we go throughout there. As far as mouth and, and throat type stuff, food continues to shift and change and taste weird for the most part. My throat, I still have that chemical kind of flavor in the back of my throat. And it lasted about the 10 days or so this past round, so about a week and a half. I don't really notice it so much now. Um, heartburn and indigestion uh, for about a week and a half as well with this past round and then just general crappy feeling in my chest and in my kind of uh, stomach area uh, as, as we went throughout uh, the past two weeks after the seventh round of chemo. Fatigue has definitely been a factor as well. So I've noticed it playing with my kids or I think in my last video I mentioned I was gonna run two miles or something like that. I think I ran maybe a quarter mile, uh, walked, maybe a half mile, then ran another quarter mile, and that was kind of like my pace for two miles or so. I just just don't have the really endurance to, or the, the oxygen in my body uh, to, to make it as far as I want uh, in, in that continued running pace. I did force myself yesterday to run a mile and a half. It was more of a, a football trot, but I did it without stopping, without walking, um, so I was really happy with that, but uh, timing-wise, it was definitely not, not, not what it used to be, but at least I'm out there. I have noticed recently that I've been sweating a lot more, um, which is, I think, a side effect from chemo. Um, I meant to mention it in my previous videos, but probably about for about three to four weeks now. It's just been a lot of sweat in my day-to-day -day activity. So obviously working out, I just notice sweating a lot more. Uh, at night when it's hot, I'm in Florida, you know, 90, 90, mid-90s, um, and just sweating a lot more uh, when I'm sleeping. Not really night sweats, just kind of just sweating. Um, and then I've really noticed it just on the day-to-day -day activities where I would not sweat prior to cancer or chemotherapy. I was not a sweaty person. I just feel myself just kind of sweating a lot more, which is just uncomfortable and, and weird. And I feel bad for those people who, who do sweat a lot on a normal basis. It's just not fun. Tomorrow I have my eighth and hopefully my final chemotherapy session. Uh, a lot of people have found out or have you know said, congratulations, hopefully you're done tomorrow. And you know I'm cautiously optimistic uh, with this next round. Hopefully it goes well. And then a week and a half later, I'll be getting a PET CT scan to verify there's nothing left in the body. And that'll also determine whether I need radiation therapy or not. So cautious, cautiously optimistic as we press throughout uh, the next two weeks to see what, what my future holds there. Hopefully I'm done with chemotherapy. Hopefully I don't need radiation therapy because that I think will be about a another month of being zapped. I don't know, we'll, we'll cross that road uh, when it comes. So excited, maybe, we'll see, we'll see how it goes there. As we approach the end of this chemotherapy round or chapter in my life, mentally I'm strong, I'm excited, I'm, I'm focused to take on the next task uh, after this is done. But physically I'm definitely the weakest I think I've been in, in, in years. So it's a, it's a weird dichotomy that I have right now where mentally I wanna go do these things and push myself, I just, I just can't do it right now. So I'm just trying to have a, you know, a focused long-term you know, three-year goal to slowly work my way towards, um, uh, to, towards these goals that I have physically uh, as well as professionally or wh wherever my life goes from here. Obviously this is kind of taking me out of flying for a while, so I'm gonna to try to get some general, avi general aviation flying uh, in the meantime while I'm waiting for the Air Force to figure out if I'm gonna be able to fly again. And beyond that, looking at some other aspects. So I've been trying to be productive in my downtime. I find myself you know, laying in bed a lot just from being tired. So uh, I've looked into, I started my real estate license training. I'm gonna be taking the exam hopefully in the next few weeks. And then looked into some other uh, potential you know, side job opportunities just to, just to expand the horizons and um, be productive in the meantime. It, Along with being productive is really just having that kind of, there's two type of mindsets out there. Uh, I've been following a podcast called The Business Thorcast. It's a pretty good podcast out there about uh, just business ideas and, and, and accelerating your individual team or organization. And um, I found a lot of use in that podcast. And the one thing that I kind of emphasize in that is having a growth mentality or a fixed state mentality. And I think if you have that mentality of a growth mentality while you're sitting through this chemo and the, the downtime you have, I think you make the most out of it uh, versus a fixed state mentality like, hey, I am here, I have chemotherapy, not much I can do about it, so I'm just going to stare at a TV or I'm just going to look at social media. Um, 
it's tempting for sure, and I think there's a time and place for it, but I think all in all, with a growth mentality, you find yourself happier on, on the outset, even though a, a little bit more work and it's a little more difficult to kind of push yourself, especially in this current you know, physical uh, state. So that's all I'll throw out there for that. All right, for the diet focus point today, we're gonna to talk about polyphenols, which is uh, a micronutrient that we'll get into in a second. But before we do that, I just wanted to uh, kind of follow up with the challenge that we had last week to add up the sugars uh, in, or the added sugars in your daily diet. So hopefully um, you took something out of that and found it useful with saying, wow, I'm eating way too much or I'm right in the right ballpark when it comes to added sugars. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. But if you didn't do the challenge, again, just kind of add up your daily added sugar and eat your normal diet check the back of the labels for whatever you're eating and you'll be surprised where all the added sugars are and it adds up pretty quick. Uh, and if you hit that, the, the goal that you had set, maybe try to challenge yourself and, and decrease it a little bit more. Um, so hope you found, found some use in that. One of my friends said it well when he said, in about 30 years, society's gonna look at added sugars like they look at tobacco now, um, which I think is potentially uh, on, on the cusp. I think we're, we're slowly learning that all this added sugar in our diet is, is pretty terrible for us. So polyphenols are a powerful micronutrient that our body needs, and I'll make a list of just some of the benefits here uh, that polyphenols have. You'll see that uh, it's been linked uh, to the protection of cancers, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, and diabetes. Um, like I said, it's best to consume these from foods directly as opposed from the supplements. The supplements have had some negative side effects, uh, but I haven't seen any studies that show negative side effects from eating these for directly from foods. All right, so where can we find some polyphenols in our lives? Where, where can we, what do we eat in order to add polyphenols into our diet? So first off is gonna be cloves. Number two is gonna be cocoa powder or dark chocolate. We realize that dark chocolate is only gonna be considered actual dark chocolate unless it's 70% or higher of cocoa in that. So um, just uh, an emphasis there, a lot of the special dark Hershey's chocolate or the Giardelli dark, uh, they're actually not. They're typically 60 to 55% chocolate. Uh, so try to find uh, that pure dark chocolate out there to, re again, reduce the added sugar, but add the benefits of, of the cocoa in your life. Uh, number three, berries. So blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, red raspberries have pretty high um, doses of polyphenols in them. Non-berry fruits as well, so like red grapes, plums, sweet cherries, and apples, uh, they're all gonna have some polyphenols for you. Beans. You got nuts as well, so hazelnuts, walnuts, almonds, and pecans. Uh, vegetables as well, so artichokes, red onions, and spinach, black and green tea, and red wine. I'm not gonna challenge you this week to increase your polyphenol intake, just more of a just FYI for you. So two other uh, DFPs I'm planning on discussing in the future is some foods that are good or bad for your liver. That's specifically important for cancer patients because your liver gets beat up from all, all the chemotherapy. And then number two is some of the cancer diets that I've been recommended and why I am or am not uh, following those, those uh, diets out there. Again, thank you for all the support, guys. I love and appreciate everyone out there. And if you have any questions or anything else you want me to discuss in these videos, please uh, reach out and I'll try to cover it. Thanks, guys. Love you. See you.